Time to put it all back together. The spray booth, garden wire, dust sheet, whatever it takes. I've been watching Fast and Loud and can dig it customs. And shows like that it worked reasonably okay. Can you dig it? Yes, you can. Canning it. Cleaned up the engine area, casings, etc. It was all very, very mucky. Might give the nicks and crannies a little bit more attention, but I'm not looking for perfection. Use this stuff, not expensive, five litres. Should last a while. And cheap pads from home bargains. It's a soapy cleaner, first pass was a 50-50 mix in a squirt gun. Hosed off. Then second pass was neat and hosed off. In the absence of a wire brush, the pads when wet and doubled up are not bad between the fins. Likewise sandpaper doubled and redoubled. I may spend some more time on the cast iron fins and then spray them black while they're visible. This stuff, no nonsense. I use it to clean the engine. So I'll give it a quick review. It worked well enough for what I used it for, so no complaints. Prior to this I generally used a water soluble motorcycle degreaser. The type you like work in for a few minutes before you wipe it off and that worked well for me it cleaned up very heavily oiled sump and the underside of a diesel engine without too much trouble I also use it in my kitchen to good effect in awkward areas where the grease builds up I tried the no nonsense in the kitchen it was not so good hard to wipe the grease off cleanly. It's a soapy cleaner. Going to have plenty of uses. Just don't expect too much from it. One use I discovered by accident is that it's a pretty decent teacup. And being soapy should be non-abrasive. The rest I'm not sure about. Time to put it all back together. Not perfect but an improvement. Just as I was thinking it's easy street, the toolbox said otherwise. The, bo the bottom fixings tend to fall out of the slots. And when you're lying on the ground, contorted, trying to hold the box, relocate and hold the fixings, just at the same time, tighten them up, it gets painful. I invested in these eight extended sockets, 4mm to 11mm, 10 pound at one of your local tool stores better than five for one also be handy for the running boards I added an extension bar to the 8mm and was able to tighten up most of the way by hand just by twirling speaking of which if there's a spare pair about borrow them and get them to hold the toolbox lightly in position for you and you can begin to tighten up bit by bit to bring the to let the toolbox work its way into position. Remember you're tightening into rubber, don't go bananas. Fitting the fuel tank, didn't give it too much thought. Lined it up with the, the filler at the top. Let this rim rest on the rubbers. Put the straps on and tension them. And put the air box in, the carburetor on and the air filter on. I then realised I'd left the fuel tap off and there was no chance of getting it on for the threaded hole here was pointing straight at the engine mount so air filter off carburetor off air box off now, I have some thick rubber packers 6mm 
cut a few strips and there's now two of them on top of the rubbers under here holding up another 12 mil. It's looking good I've got the fuel tap on and it looks like the spare tank will empty to the last drop. So the air box is back on and of course the head of the nut slips into the slot at the back. I made a little faux pas in an earlier video. I was going to take the packers out but they do no harm, it's just going to remain. This is PJ, the other scooter with a horizontal outlet. Looks better, looks easier. Looks like it simplifies things. Might be a good option. Right, I'm working left hand at the moment, but this is a tank strap. Had to snip it in half to get it off. I've done a homemade repair. Strip of aluminium. Four pop rivets. Could possibly have bonded it somehow. But I'm okay with it. So I shall put it back on. Leave as is. It's a little feature. And then, sometime in the future perhaps, if there's a crowd about and I remove the side panel, it may turn out to be absolutely riveting. Put the wheel on, 100 spring washers. The torque setting is whatever you want to set it at, plus whatever it takes to wind a locking nut down. A stud, which is negligible. I'm at 21. I put the screw back together. I was having trouble getting getting the right tension into the gear cables. I've taken the top cover off and this is the scenario I find. The outer cable has escaped its location and is now visible. It should be tucked under here and the inner cable coming out this small hole right there I've removed the horn casting and mud guard as one unit I suggest it nice sticky makes sense exposes the gear cables 12 fixings in total 2 under the badge and one concealed under each floor rubber. The other eight are visible. I fed two new inner cables in. The old ones were frayed. I located both outer cables into the sockets under the steel plate and pushed them fully up and home. The twist grip mechanism is now functioning as it should. Sorry time. The gears are up. Push pull system. A few years back, logic said to me that taut cables must be good for such a system. So I got them good and tight. The scooter wouldn't start. And every so many kicks, there would be a break your ankle kick back through the pedal. I tried it again a year or so later as an experiment with the same result. I can only presume the scooter is verging on getting into gear and trying to fire it up to give the kickback. With this in mind, I located neutral, left what I considered to be a decent amount of slack and hit the street. First, second, third, very close together. Fourth could not be located stretched too far and the marker was still short of the figure 3. Then, then when I was tinkering with the tick over I got a slight kick back through the pedal so I guess they were still too tight. I built in an additional 4mm of slack at both trunnions and started tinkering. I've used up all the slack on this one, it looks like I've gone in the other direction on the other one. And in this position 
I can't locate first, but I can locate fourth, which I'm happy about. It had me concerned. In this position, I can't locate first gear. Neutral is one, second is zero, third is two, and fourth is at three. But I'm happy to have rediscovered four. It had me concerned. Distance from the mark to the centre of zero is about six mil. That suggests to locate neutral on the mark, I have to move, I have to twist the grip forward six mil. Which means loosening one cable by six mil and tightening the other by a similar amount, which will be next. To get the zero to line up with the mark, I have to slacken this off. I'll put an old trunnion on here, it's just a visual thing. A six or seven mil gap. I'm going to undo both Allen screws, and when these two surfaces touch, I'll tighten this one up. And then do the other side. For the inner cable, I have a spanner cut in half to get the final tension. The tinkering worked. Took it out in the road. I was able to find all the gears. A little bit leggy or stretchy. Put a little more tension into the inner cable and improve first. And then put a little more tension into the outer cable. And that compacted second to fourth. Took it for a 20 mile round trip. Gave them a little more tension. And they're working quite well. Been running around in A bar, still wasn't happy with the fuel through the kickstart pedal, especially when compared to PJ the other scoot. So I knew there was improvement to be found. And I have a tendency to reuse old parts if I think it's okay. Ordering odd items. P and P waiting in the postman doesn't appeal, and so it was with the kickstart piston. Probably not a great idea, so I decided to swap it for a new one, old, new, and they're different. This is much shallower, and chipped away here under stress here, and. Really not a, much of a straight edge at all. And if I roll them over, they're even more different. Very high here. Not a, much of a surface compared to the new one. It's that jumble of parts issue again. Both the same item, yet different. 
This rises up. This stays flat. And with this shallow face here, becomes the common denominator for all surfaces. No massive grip. Probably worse here where it's been chipped away. So I should pay more attention. I guess that's the moral of the story. Pay more attention, examine more thoroughly. And I've had a new one in. I've only kicked it over a couple of times. I see I'm getting a chip here. I now have to go look at the gear cogs. One thing leads to another. C'est la vie. Bad idea. front suspension and fitted SIP tubeless wheel rims. It already had a 175 AF kit in it and can cruise about 50 miles per hour. I've had it on the road a good few times since I put it back together and the difference after the Remedials is night and day. It feels like it's moved overnight into the modern world. It's changed from a Bone jarring vintage shopping trolley to a modern day scooter. Compared to the old ride, it could be floating on air. Very pleased with the outcome. Anyway, it's bueno. <laughs>